Today we are making a tutorial on lights in Farming Simulator 19 and I will show you everything you need to know in order to modify or create lights in Farming Simulator 19. So first we're going to look at the two different parts that are make up the light system in Farming Simulator 19. So here I have one of the standard lights from Giant's library of lights, and I will show you in just a while. But just for now, let's look at this light. The light consists of the static part, which is the illumination of the actual light object. It also consists of the light source, which sends out light beams to actually light up something in front of you in the dark. So the static part here, which is the actual illumination of the light object is configured as uh, using the vehicle shader and a static light variation of the vehicle shader. When doing that you get this light control down here. This is where you can see the illumination effect on, on the light itself. But it doesn't send out any light so just having illumination itself will not make you see in the dark. It just makes it look as if the light object is actually shining light. You can also change the color of this illumination, and we will look at that later. You can't actually change that in Giant's Editor. You need either Blender or Maya to do that, and we will have a look at it. So if we also look at the second part of the light system, the actual light source itself, this is something that is easiest to just create in Giant's Editor by doing Create Light. You configure the light in different ways using this light menu for the actual light object. And you can choose from Spot, Point or Directional Light. Typically mods use the Spot configuration for any kind of working lights or, or high beams or front lights or things like that. You can also see a lot of configurations using Point Light. And that is often used to illuminate like the interiors of a cabin. So if you actually want to see the light beams in Giant's Editor, you can do that by going up to the view menu, under show, and show lights. And then you will see the beams that comes out from the light source. And this is not from the, the, the static part, which is the illumination. This is not what is giving the beams. This is just the illumination of the object. What is actually giving the beams is the light source. This is what gives the beam. You configure this light source in what color it will have, which is not the same as the color of the illumination of the object, but the actual color of the light. And you will define the cone angle. A narrow angle like this will be like a really spotlight. And then you can have a wider angle, 80 degrees, and then you define the range of it. If it's one meter, really short. If it's five meters, it's a little bit longer, or maybe you want it to shine 50 meters. So that's typically what you want to configure for the light source. Now let's look at the XML files and show how these two parts actually look in the XML files. Here I have the Tracked Puma that I have released on ModHub, so we will use that one. This is the main section, which contains several parts. It contains the shared lights, and it contains the light states. It contains the real lights, which is defined in low and high. And I will explain all of this in just a while. It contains the default lights, turn lights, brake lights, beacon lights, dashboards lights. So if we look at this... <coughs> First, the shared light section. This is where you define the, the standard standard lights from Giant's Assets library. So if we look at this, we can see that shared light points to a link node, which is just a transform node or a transform group in Giant's editor. And it specifies what light types should be possible for this light. And then it points out an actual light from Giant's assets library of lights and the XML file name for that light. This XML file actually points out an i3D file like this one, for instance, but without the actual light 
they contain the actual light object and the illumination part of it as called the statics. And if we look at the, all the lights that are available in Giant's asset library, there are actually two libraries for lights. The Hella lights, they consist of these light objects. And then you have the listed library of lights, which is a huge library of many different lights for turn signals, brakes, rear lights, interior lights, side markers. So going back to our configuration in the XML file, you don't have to use these. You can use your own light objects as well, and we will create our own in just a while just to show you how you actually create light object that has illumination other than white, red illumination or orange illumination. So we will, we will look at that. The state section, this is an, a nice one that you actually might want to configure for once. It defines the, the different states that the vehicle should go through when you repeatedly press the F key. It defines which light types to use when cycling the F key. So for instance, when you press the F key once, it will use light type zero. When you press the F key again, it will start light types zero and one. When you press the F key the third time, it will light up the light types zero, one and two. And when if you press the F key again, it will cycle back to nothing, obviously, and then start this section of three all over again. And you can define your own here. So let's say that you want state here, that after you have gone through light type zero, maybe you don't want to go directly to having both zero and one. Maybe you want only one. Like so, first press of F, light type zero, second press of F, light type one, third press of F, light type zero and one, and so forth. The real lights section, this is interesting. Now, this is the actual lights, I'll write that, send out the beams of light, and not the static part, which comes further down, but the, the actual lights. And the way this is configured with low and high, you might think that low and high refers to some sort of low light or, or high beam. That's not the case. Low means what should light up for low graphics settings. And high means what should lie up for high graphics settings. And the reason why this exists is because lights is something that is quite demanding for the graphics. For low graphics settings, you really want to limit the number of light sources and distance the light sources actually go through. So for instance, we can see that for the low graphic settings, we have four different light sources here. For the high settings, we have many more. So if you have your computer in high graphic settings, you will have lights that shine further and you will have more lights that actually light up and show you what's behind the darkness. Right, so the default lights. This is the static parts of the lights illumination of the light object itself. So if we look at these static parts in the actual i3D of the Puma. So here we are. Let's open it up and find the lights. Here are the static lights. Here's the real lights, the ones here in front for low graphic settings, which is in the middle like this. And for high graphic settings, you have two of them. You have actually a light source on the left side and on the right side. So you might wonder then, where is the static lights and the illumination part for all other lights? Well, as you can see, there are no other lights. There should be lights here, there are lights up here, and the lights up here. And those are defined in the XML here, as I explained previously, with share lights and pointing out a existing light from Giant's assets library. So these will be loaded dynamically when the mod loads. And within this, you have the static configuration and the i3D object for that light. But the actual light source is not part of that. So that is something that needs to be defined. So for instance, here is the work light front low, which is for low graphic settings, and the work light back high, which is for high graphic settings. And you can see for low graphic settings, there's only one placed in the middle. For high graphic settings, there's actually four of them. Here, 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 and here. 
So what we will do now is that we will modify this so you can see actually how it works. And we will start by adding a light from Giant's assets library of lights and place it just on the roof or something. So you can see that we actually get a new light and how we make it shine in the right direction and that it actually works in game. So let's go to it. Let's choose what we want as a light. I'm thinking that I want to add maybe this one. Hella working light round 01, which has a mount. So let's verify that this file exists. Data, shared, assets, lights, Hella. So we'll copy that name and we'll just paste it here. And then we'll copy this line and we'll give it a link node here. And I'll just type zero slash zero for now because we are going to insert a, a node in the i3d file. And then for file data, we need this data shared as this lights lizard and replaced with Hella. And here we want this name. There, dot .xml. So now we need to create this link node. If we go to this, we create the link node, we simply do create a transform group and it will pop down right here. And we will say hella roof, just like that. And we will move it. We want to put it on the roof. That means that we should put it in the cabin part of the tractor. Since the cabin has suspension, it actually moves differently than the rest of the tractor. So we need to put the light in the cabin section. We'll put it in the shared lights section together with the other ones. So like that, hella roof, and then we'll move it the way we want it. Where do we want this to be placed? Um, something like that. We'll, we'll try. I don't really know where the attachment point for, for it is, so we will just do that for now. If this all goes well, we will have the light here pop up when we go into game. And this is the index path or the node that we want. What we do is we go down to the i3d mapping section here, and that's the node that we want, and we map it to a name, and we will call it Hella Roof. This is the name we will use as the link node configuration of our shared light. Here, like so, Hella Roof. Now, we will save that, and we will start the game. All right, so let's go into the shop here and buy our mod. There it is. And here you can actually see the light. The light was actually quite a lot smaller than I expected. So let's buy this and enter it. The light is there. Does it shine? There it is. And it shines when I am on the third light state. And that is because we uh, configured light type 2 so it, it actually turns on here in the last stage so you have the different light types 0 1 and 2 and then you have light type 3 which is the high beam so when you press the high beam key you, you actually enter light type 3 but it doesn't actually do anything it doesn't actually light up and to show you that it doesn't we will configure it in a way that we can turn on this light only and none of the other lights. We'll keep it at light type 2, like this, and we'll for now just switch all of these other light type 2s to light type 1, like so. So we have configured all the static lights to illuminate only at light state 1, and this is the only one that illuminates at light stage 2. So now we also want to make sure that the lights only light up at light type 1. In my case, it doesn't matter what I type in the low graphics settings because I'm running high graphics settings. But we can just switch. Oh, this can actually be at 3 still. We'll just switch the 2s to 1. So making sure that the lights that are defined for work light front high and work light back high goes on at, at stage 1. So we change this to actually define the different light states. First press of F is light, light type 0, then 0 and 1, then 0, 1 and 2, in order to see our newly added light, which is now 
change so that it's the only light of light type 2. We have a light state which actually only uses light type 2 and none of the other light types. All right, so let's look at this. Reload the mod. Uh, light type 0, 0 and 1, 0, 1 and 2, and 2 only. And as you can see, it doesn't give us any lights. It only illuminates the actual object, but we, we can't see anything in the dark. So to fix this, we need to create a light in Giant's Editor by actually doing create light. And here's our light. We can call it like so. We'll move it so that it actually is placed in the roof, basically somewhere where the, the light object was. And now we, we need to define the direction of this light. You do this in this section. First of all, we want it to be a spotlight, like so. We also want to set the range to it. In this case, 500 meters is a bit far, but let's say at least 100 meters. And we want it to have a very narrow cone angle, maybe 20 degrees, like that, and no shadow maps. To see the direction of this, it actually shines in the opposite direction as the blue arrow. But to see this, we turn on Show Lights in Giant's Editor. And among all the other lights that you have here, we can see that this is the light that we are defining. So we'll turn it around. 0, 0, 0. Rotate it 180. Like that. So now, I don't know if you can, can see the, the beams that are coming up, coming out of this point here. We want to actually rotate it so that it shines a little bit down, like this. You can see the beams better now if I move it, I think. So we want it to shine down like this, not on the hood, but, but ground in front of us. Something like that, just for test. So that's now our light source. And we'll move that and put it into the section here. We, we actually created a, a shared light section here. And we'll just put the the light roof section we can put it in the in the, sh the same spot like this and we reload the vehicle and if we look at the illumination now zero one and two and now two only and if we look now you can see that we are actually sending light beams and there is actually something that makes us see in the dark. So this is, these are the two things. The static light, which illuminates the light object, and the actual light source, which sends the light beams to make you actually see something in the dark, like the brick wall in front of us. Now for the second part of this tutorial, we are going to create our own LED ramp to be placed on the roof. And we want to make it to shine and illuminate in blue. We'll start by actually creating some, some simple 3D objects in, in Maya. You, you can do this in Blender, obviously the commands are different, but all the things are essentially the same. You create an object, you paint the vertices of the illuminated parts with the color that you want it to illuminate on, you make a transparent glass in, in front of it if you want to, and you export it to Giant's Editor. And in Giant's Editor, we will define the vehicle shader and the static lights parts as a variation. So Blender or Maya can do the same. Let's start with a cube, like so, and we'll extend it, because we want it to be a LED ramp. And I'll imagine, in this case, I'll, this will be the front of it. Then we'll create a number of spheres shrink this so that it's a little bit smaller like so these will be the the reflectors of each actually we we don't need so many subdivisions we can go with 10 and 10 that's fine so these will be the reflectors that we want so we want one there we'll duplicate it and we'll put that one there, we'll duplicate it. There. 
So then we select all of them, like so. We combine them into one object. We'll take this object and that object and we'll do a mesh boolean difference. And now we have an object with our sort of, how would you say, the reflectors in, in, in here. And now we need to move these reflectors out of, of this. So we'll select all the faces and then we'll deselect the external faces. That is, will be the actual light housing, like so. So now I only have the faces for the, in the reflectors and we'll separate them to their own objects. Let's see, that's one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that, not that one, that's the lighthouse, that's the LED bar, that one, and that one, and we combine, combine them back again. So this is our reflectors. And where is our, where is our object? There is our, this is our LED bar. Like so, and we do edit, delete all by type history. So, so that's the two things that we have. Now we will make the LED bar a little more nice. We will select edge, select all the edges that go around it, like so. Not on the front side, and I'll you'll see why in just a moment. We'll make so, and we'll bevel it like that. We'll increase this a little bit and we decrease this so we get some if you look at it now you we have some nice round corners on this one but again not on the front side and this is because we want to also have a transparent glass here in front of it and to get that transparent glass we duplicate this led bar object here and we steal sort of only the the front part of this. So we can actually either delete all the faces that are on on this side around, uh, like so, or we can simply delete these faces and then select these edges all the way around it like that. And I'll move these edges in like that. So I can adjust how thick do I want the, the front glass to be. Uh, and we'll, we'll do like that. And then we'll rotate this object 180 degrees. And we'll put it in place like so. We'll give it the material. Assign new material. Just a Lambert. We'll give it a sort of a in the this is just the color that, that we're, we're going to use uh, in, in here to, to separate the materials. We'll give it a transparency just to, for our own sake in, in, in modeling here. It will be, we can change and make this different in, in Giant's editor later. Then if we want to have some sort of mounting mechanisms on, on, on this so for you know, you want to have something that actually makes it stick to the roof, so to say. And we can do just a cylinder like this. And we'll shrink it. And we'll put it over here. Move it a little bit down, like that. We'll duplicate it and put one on this end, something like that. And then we'll combine these three into one object, which is our LED bar, assign a new material to it, Lambert, and we'll give it just a color for doesn't look too good right now, but we will now UV map this so that we can actually change the color of this in Giant's editor. So I'll go to, in my case, save layouts and perspective and UV editor. So I get this perspective layout and the UV layout at the same time. 
and we will now choose our UV shells depending now if we want you know maybe separate colors or the mounting pins and, and the actual light bar we can separate them into different tiles in, in the UV editor so if we take the LED bar for instance as, as this one and we'll go to UV toolkit transform and we'll move it zero and down so this is the tile that is referred to as color mat one in Giant's editor. And what we have now is the sort of pins here, the mounting pins, and we'll move them down into what's called color mat zero space. So that's all fine. Now, what we have left to do is that we need to actually go into the reflectors and we will now paint these vertices with the color and we go to mesh display paint vertices color the color that we want them to illuminate on so now it actually matters what color we choose here so if we want it to be a bluish and i can now paint this like so but i can also flood the entire object that i have selected like so so this is now when these reflectors light up they will actually light up in this color and not white or, or as the normal or red they will light up in this bluish color so we're done by that we'll now do edit delete all by type history go back to everything like that we we'll go into giants exporter and we'll set some attributes of this obviously all of them need to have no rigid bodies or something we want to clip distance 300 basically that's that's what we want we also need to i almost forgot this is now a, a led ramp that is i don't know one, two, three, four and a half is nine meters long. So we obviously want it to be a little bit smaller. So what we can do is we can just group this into a group and then we'll change the, the scale of this group. So we scale it down. And how big do we want it? Do we want it to be close to a meter maybe? So there's one meter between each of these. So this is a little bit less than half a meter on this side and a half a meter on this side. So We'll, we'll just settle for that. And what we need to do now is to modify freeze translation Oops. and modify big pivot. That's it. Now we can go back to export. We'll save this first. Save scene as. Uncheck that one. Use Maya file name and export all. Uh, run freeze to pivot. Okay. When this says uh, freeze to pivot, the Giants exporter in Maya it actually means make pivot. So I'll, I'll do that, just to get rid of the errors, like so. Export all. Okay, no errors. Now we have a light bar. So here's our nice little light bar with the transparent class in front of it as well, and the actual lighthouse. So we'll call this glass, like that. And we'll save it. So, and then we'll go back to our tractor. We'll do view, turn off the lights here, show, turn off the show lights, like so. And we import our light, our LED bar, light bar, I mean. So here it is. Here's the, the one that we have. And we'll place it like we did before. We, we can place it in the static lights section here. And we move it to where we want it. Maybe there. Maybe we want to rotate it a little bit so that it actually points down. Something like that. Now what we need to do is we need to define the materials for this. So the reflectors, for instance, these are the illuminating parts. So let's, what we need to do, we need to choose the vehicle shader. That is in under data, shaders, vehicle shader, and the variation we want is static light then we can give the static light uh, that it will shine in, in Giant's editor. This light control has no effect when you actually configure it in, in the XML files later. This is something that you can use to create the illumination and strength if you are not controlling the lights in XML, but simply have a, a light object. So is it this bluish color that we wanted? It should be hard to see when, when the whole object is blue. Anyway, so, so that's the reflectors. Now for the glass. 
So the glass will actually also be using the same vehicle shader that we just did on, on the... And now we will probably get an error, I, I assume. Static lights. Yep. We forgot to paint the vertices color of the actual glass. So I need to fix that. Be right back. So now we will import my modified, where I actually painted, just painted the glass in white vertices. And I will import it, like so. We'll remove this glass from that one. And we'll take this glass, and we'll move it up to this group over here. And then we'll just zero these out, and it will be in. Now we can actually do this. So what we did for the glass is that we need to give it a transparent albedo map. We do this by finding our shared folders, data, shared, clear plastic diffuse. And it looks like this. It's just a 32 by 32 small transparent texture. So that will give us sort of this look. In order for it to be transparent, we need to add the alpha blending checkbox. So then it's actually alpha blends the, and we can actually see the reflectors inside. We also need to give it the gloss map and we haven't created any so we'll just use the default specular, default specular, that one, and we need to use the default normal. We haven't created any normal map either so we use the default one. And then we need the tangent with that we can fix over here on the shape and the tangents. Now it looks the way we want it. This is a transparent glass and we can see that. And we're done now with, with that one. Now we'll go to the reflectors. No, sorry, to the LED bar itself. We UV mapped this one so we can actually change color to it. In order to do that we need to give it a gloss map. Same thing here. We'll use the default specular for that. Like so. And we need the tangent for the normal map. Give it the same shader as we had. Vehicle shader. And in this case, we go with variation color mask. And now you saw that it changed color instantly. We made the sort of attachment points in color mat zero space. We can do those white if we want to. But I was thinking about chrome. So, and we can do the entire housing in chrome if we want. We gave that the actual housing to color mat one space. So if you do this one, and this is one, 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 that's white, obviously. So that's the sort of lightest chrome. So now the entire housing is, is chrome. We can do it a little bit darker chrome if we want to. So there's our chrome light bar. Illuminated and all. But we don't have any light sources yet. We should create some light sources. Create light, and here's the first one. Let's change the rotation of it so we can move it into place. For a high graphics setting, if you remember, the, I explained the low and high graphics settings. For a high graphics settings, we can do a light source for every each of these reflectors. I'll do that. We'll go with a spotlight. We'll go with a cone angle of 40. We'll go with a range of 100. We'll go with a color now that is bluish. So if we want to have the same color that we painted the vertices with, we can go back and maybe see what we actually did paint on those vertices. So I, by doing this, I actually get the current color of the vertices. And we can check this here. And this is in RGB 0 to 1, as used by Giants. And it's 21, 45, and 1. So 0 0.21, 0 0.45, and 1. So that's the bluish color that we chose. And we'll turn on to show the, the lights here. This is now my, my light source. 
that, that, sorry, that's the old one. Yeah, delete that one, delete that one, the old, the Hella stuff that we did. And this is our light source. And we need to rotate it along the y axis so it actually shines forward. And we'll point it down basically in the same angle as we chose the, the LED bar. I'm not gonna bother with um, doing many of these, but I'll three of them like this. So now we have three lights like that. We'll save this and we'll go back to the XML. What do we need? We obviously need to remove this shared light because I just deleted that light. And we're not going to do any shared light for this because we actually don't use the Giant's Assets libraries. We created our own object that's actually part of the i3d file. We'll give it the light state of 2 so that we can actually see this created light as the only light that we define. And we'll work with the, the high section here. We'll steal one of these lines. We can steal this line like that. And put it in here and here we'll enter the, the light node and we should in this case always define an i3d definition so we'll jump down to where we have this we'll remove this hella roof so that's the node that we want for light one and we copy this because we had three lights light two light three Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, like so. So these is our lights. Let's define them. So these are the lights. These are the real lights. Light node, light one, light two, light three. And if you are on a low graphic settings. We only use one of them, like one. But if you're in high graphic settings, we'll do three of them, like so. So that, that's the real lights part. Now we need to define the, the static parts. And we do this here. We'll steal this line and, and copy it. And we want light type 2. And here we need to set the reflectors object. So we'll go. We'll go here and we'll take the reflectors at one. LED bar underscore static. Right. So that, that's what we want. We'll save it. We'll make sure we save the i3d file. We'll go back to the game. We reload the vehicle, and if we turn on day, first and foremost, you can see our LED bar over there with its transparent glass and the reflectors is visible. You can give it a lot more detail, obviously, but and we'll go to nighttime and we'll turn on the lights. This is lights, light type zero, light type zero and one. Light type 0, 1, and 2, and light type 2 only. And you can see our bluish light. And if we want to check the lights, we can press F5 on PC to, to show the light beams. The angles and stuff like that. So you can actually see that in this case, all three light sources are shining light beams. And you can see that they are pointing a bit downwards. Well, that's it, I guess. That's that's how you do lights in in Farming Simulator 19.